You can walk on Titan without a spacesuit. Have you ever wondered what it feels like if you find yourself in outer space without any spacesuit? Hmm, probably the answer to what happens is pretty clear. But what if we perform the experiment not just in outer space, but on the surface of a moon? Today I'm going to tell you about Titan, one of Saturn's moons, and explain to you how it can be possible to walk on the surface of Titan without a spacesuit. Okay, for starters, why exactly is Titan worth visiting? Titan is an extraordinary and exceptional place among other places in our solar system. It is the largest of the 53 moons that orbit Saturn. In fact, it is the second largest moon in our solar system after Jupiter's grain meet. But despite being one of the most sizable moons, Titan has a rather weak gravitational pull. For example, a person who weighs 100 pounds on Earth will weigh only 12 pounds on Titan. And this also gives me an idea for a great new diet plan. It's called eat anything you want and just move to Titan. But what this moon really has in common with other space objects is that it's quite inhospitable. And I'll tell you why. Titan's average surface temperature is a chilly negative 289 degrees Fahrenheit. That's negative 178 degrees Celsius, which is a little cold even for the hardiest Earthlings. So the idea of visiting this moon without wearing a spacesuit doesn't really look so possible. But not for Titan. This magnificent rock has something in common with Earth, too. For example, Titan is the only moon in the solar system known to have clouds and a thick planet-like atmosphere. Like Earth, Titan's cloudy atmosphere is mostly nitrogen, but it seems to contain a much higher percentage of smoggy chemicals like ethane. This smog gathers in such large concentrations that it rains gasoline-like liquids, something that denizens of Los Angeles might be familiar with. Of course, a moon that has gasoline-like rain sounds like a huge candle that is just waiting to be lit hardly sounds like a good place to visit. However, remember that for any combustion requires oxygen, so as long as you're super careful with your oxygen tanks, any manned missions to Titan will be fine. Yet, on the off chance that there is a fire on Titan, we wouldn't want to try and put it out with water. Why? I'll give you a hint. The H2O in the O stands for oxygen. So if you succeed and visit Titan, you'll get a chance to see not only the beautiful landscapes, but lakes as well. Radar images from the Cassini spacecraft revealed a land of lakes in Titan's northern atmosphere. These lakes are about the size of North America's Great Lakes. But swimming or boating on these lakes will be difficult, as the density of liquid methane is only about half the density of water. As a result, paddlers will have a hard time churning the methane enough to propel a craft or their bodies when needed. And obviously, you'll need a special spacesuit like swimming gear, or have a body that is made up of material that is resistant into cracking at cryogenic temperatures. And frankly, I think you should work on making the latter a reality. Living on Titan, you'd also be safe from cosmic rays and moonquakes, so it's kind of a pretty benign environment. It's hard to find a place in our solar system where you can land without wearing a completely airtight heated suit and heated air supply. So yeah, it's a place where you really don't need to be inside a usual space clothing. But you need to wear something anyway, because the temperature negative 180 degrees centigrade is no joke. You'll need an oxygen mask at least. Not so bad news is that the air is much denser on Titan. Titan's atmospheric pressure is about 60% greater than the Earth's. So walking on Titan would be roughly the same as walking on the bottom of a swimming pool. If you didn't try that, oh, you missed out on a lot. The gravity on Titan is 14% of Earth's gravity, just a little less than our moon. Since you are lighter and the air is denser, with artificial wings it might be possible to take off and fly. But I think the ability to fly is not going to save you in a place where you have hazarding methane lakes and freezing temperatures. People would need to wear respirators to breathe oxygen since the atmosphere is mostly nitrogen. But the good news is that a full pressure suit wouldn't be necessary. The light on Titan is a little dim, just like after a sunset here on Earth, due to the haze particles in the thick atmosphere. People living on one hemisphere of Titan, the one always facing Saturn, would have beautiful views of the ringed planet. So, if you were to face the outer solar system and you had to make an emergency landing to face death, go to Titan. So, what about the spacesuit? Well, if you lived on Titan, you wouldn't need a pressurized suit to survive, which is quite unusual. All you would need is an oxygen mask and very warm clothing. Don't forget about the temperature. 
Exposed tissue freezes instantly. No reasonable amount of insulation would protect you. You need heating. Your air supplies need to be heated too. Otherwise, you'd be breathing gas so cold it would freeze your lung tissue instantly. But a pressure suit is not needed. You could build a house well insulated, very well heated, and perhaps with slight overpressure inside as opposed to a pressurized space station. And you could go out on the shores of its hydrocarbon seas and listen to the waves. But you better hope that your suit's heating system never fails. Otherwise, you become an ice sculpture yourself in very short order. But I still think if you're not some freaky scientist, you're unlikely to be happy going to such a distant moon. You people would take a normal classic moon trip the only white and gray colored desert in science. Share this video with your friends, and if you like, just write a comment down below, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel to see more interesting videos. See you guys!